Luciano Pavarotti, Placido Domingo, Jose Carreras, the name of outstanding Ukrainian singer Anatoly Solovyanenko is among these virtuosos. Today's program, Ukraine on Stage, focuses on this famous musician. The National Opera of Ukraine. Anatoly Solovyanenko dedicated the golden years of his career to this theater. For many years, student gallery and respectable stalls listened to Ukrainian Nightingale and Minor Duke with a sinking heart. Вперше, далеко 1963 року, Long ago, in 1963, he first appeared on the stage of this theater in Verdi's opera Rigoletto. And for almost 30 years, the audience listened with admiration and gratitude to his beautiful voice. Anatoly Solovyanenko was born into a family of minors, and at his father's insistence, he received a technical education in the Donetsk Polytechnic Institute. Moreover, Anatoly taught in the same institute until love for singing won. According to the laws of the universe, the meeting of teacher and soloist of the Donetsk opera Alexander Korobaychenko and future legend of the Ukrainian opera Anatoly Solovyanenko was destiny. Those were years of private learning under a highly experienced and demanding teacher and singer. There are 1,000 vocal lessons recorded in Karabaychenko's personal diary. But Karabaychenko taught Anatoly not only vocal art, but also to be a man worthy of the title of an opera soloist. He also forced him to learn foreign languages, especially Italian. 1962, Kyiv hosted a show of folk talents from the Donetsk Oblast. Both the jury and the audience were fascinated by a voice of incredible beauty and the widest range. It was the voice of Anatoly Solovyanenko. Aria Radamus in Verdi's opera Aida laid the path to Solovyanenko's singing career. Anatoly was immediately invited to the internship group of the Kyiv Opera, and a year later, after winning a contest of young opera singers, Solovyanenko got an opportunity to undergo training at the famous La Scala Opera House. Here, the wise instruction of Korobaychenko in vocal art and knowledge of the Italian language helped him. Anatoly's teacher at La Scala, Gennaro Barra, wrote a letter to Korobaychenko, where he expressed deep respect to the teacher for his skill and for what he invested in Anatoly. For three years in Italy, Anatoly Solovyanenko with the maestro Gennaro Barra prepared a number of leading opera parties, which he repeatedly performed on the best world stages, including the Metropolitan Opera in New York. Italians considered him a teacher or a journalist because Solovyanenko spoke excellent Italian. Every day he read newspapers and books in Italian. It was necessary as an exercise and a singing warm-up. There are pleasant memories for me. Once, when I came to the theater, I heard a strong, powerful voice. He took such a fermata. I thought who was singing in such a way in our country. This was Anatoly Solovyanenko, who joined our theater. After that, we underwent training in Italy. He went to the La Scala Theater, and I went to the National Academy of Santa Cecilia in Rome. When we returned, we had a joint repertoire, and our communication was very close. He started to use the knowledge and experience he acquired in Italy in scenic images. The singer performed a number of the most difficult opera parts at the Kiev Opera House. With great success, Anatoly Solovyanenko appeared as Lansky in Tchaikovsky's opera Evgeny Onegin. Anatoly Solovyanenko Jr. was greatly impressed by this part. At the age of six, I was first taken to a performance featuring my father. It was the opera Yevgeny Onegin. My father acted as Lansky. 
everything was fine. I watched the performance with interest, till the duel, where Onegin killed Lansky. And I burst out crying. Mother calmed me down, took me to the backstage to my father. On the way we met Roman Maybroda, who acted as Onegin and was on break. And I attacked him, almost tore his coat. But my father came and calmed me down. It was my first visit to the opera. I'm a slave of my voice. Anatoly Solovyanenko once said about himself that he was incredibly hard-working and disciplined. He was a very organized person and his organization was in everything. He was hard-working, delicate in everyday life, self-disciplined, and he rejected everything that prevented him from work. The most important thing for him was sounding his voice. His family came second, and his few friends of youth, which he had until the last days, took third place. He was disciplined and very self-critical. He demanded from himself more than from others. This singer always kept himself in immaculate vocal form and took care of his voice, avoiding having any conversations with other singers. He came to rehearsals or performances, sang and immediately returned home. No backstage conversations. I've never heard of his participation in such a thing. Good conduct, decency and amazing modesty are rare qualities in the artistic environment. These people, as a rule, are driven by the struggle for the leading role. But Anatoly Solovyanenko was well respected by everyone. We met in a very interesting way. I had not seen him before on stage, and I came to the service entrance. There was a group of young ballerinas discussing something very loudly. Then a concierge angrily screamed at them, Hush, it's Solovyanenko. I was so surprised that I opened my mouth with admiration. He was singing an aria from the opera Zaporozhets Beyond the Danube. Later he appeared so modest with an old briefcase full of newspapers notes that he had prepared for our meeting. It was about the organization of tours at the San Francisco theater, he said. It's amazing that you kept youth and sound purity at your age. He had an incredible magnetism. He just fascinated the audience. Everyone was crazy about his voice, his manner of performance, and of course, the incredibly high notes. The main secret is that he almost never sang with a microphone. The second is he began singing late. At the age of 30 he came to the theater, that is, he was physically strong and had a certain life experience, a sense of space, time and his physical state. History has no subjunctive mood. If Anatoly Solovyanenko lived in a free country, 
his name would be as world famous as the names of Placido Domingo and Luciano Pavarotti. Only individuals could break through the Soviet Iron Curtain, and only with detailed restrictive prescriptions. He was the only traveling singer at that time. Everything started with popular New Year's program The Blue Light in Moscow. He, a young handsome man, sang perfectly and the success was stunning. After that he was invited everywhere. Alfred, Duke, Edgar, Faust, Rudolf, Kavaradossi, Nadir. This is a small list of opera parts performed by Anatoly Solovyanenko. He had to appear at thousands of concerts with Ukrainian and Italian songs and with a chamber repertoire on the poorly equipped stages of the Philharmonic. There were plants, open-air stages in large and small cities. How did he manage to keep himself under such intense loads? Umenia отказаться от того, что мешает. Знаете, в нашем доме никогда не было больших компаний, шумных компаний, это вообще он не любил. Для детей он был огромным примером в том плане... There were no big noisy companies at our home because he avoided them. He was a great example for his children because he followed everyday schedule order, from morning to appearing on the stage. He tried all his life to be the first on stage and he succeeded because he worked hard. If he did not sing, he read art books. Если он не учил новый репертуар, это были книги, это были книги в основном по искусству, их у нас очень много. Никто ни мне, ни брата, ни жодного разу не дав. He never beat me or my brother, but my father had a special look, which was worse than any punishment. Ну, був набагато гірший, ніж будь-яке інше покарання. And then you realized that you did some mischief and that you need to rectify the situation. Two songs with his wife Svetlana are a worthy extension of the Solovyanenko family. The eldest son, Andrei, is a businessman. He lives and works in Canada. The youngest son, Anatoly Jr., continues his family business. Today he is the main director of the National Opera of Ukraine. He was very affected by his family, he held dear to his heart his family, wife and children. He loved children and once said, Svetlana is too young to understand what happiness is to have sons at home. So it was all his life Svetlana loved her husband and Anatoly was an exemplary family man. It is generally accepted that outstanding painters, artists and musicians are not adapted to ordinary life and that they are helpless in everyday life. Anatoly Solovyanenko destroyed all such stereotypes. He could even cook borscht, and he did it fantastically. I've never eaten such great borscht. If you talk about the taste of childhood, for me it's my father's borscht. He cut grass in the summer house and put new slates on the roof. There was nothing he was not able to do. He was concerned about everything that happened in the world. He was interested in everything – physics, chemistry and technical disciplines. He was a well-educated engineer and was very fond of chess and played the game very well. As an opera singer and as a person, Anatoly Solovyanenko was special. He was truly unique. Дівчане хоче, як ж то буде щастя в нас. 
він відрізнявся своїм He differed from others in his world view and had a very serious attitude towards his profession, allowing little space for his life interests in others. Суто-життєвих якихось інтересів. Він своє життя повністю підпорядкував мистецтву, повністю підпорядкував And this everyday sacrifice was compensated by the huge success that accompanied him all his life. Звичайно, компенсована грандіозним успіхом, який його супроводжував все життя.